Hey guys, Ruckus Gaming here, coming at you with another episode of Tuesday Tips and Tricks. Today we are talking about the Barricaded Achievement. For this achievement, you are going to need to get 999 block in a single combat. Now, this is a little bit different from some of the other achievements like Neon, which can only really be done on the defect unless you're doing a Prismatic Shard run. But outside of that, Neon is really only doable on the defect. Barricaded is easily possible on any character. It is not just an ironclad achievement. And each character gets there in a very different kind of way. I think ironclad is definitely the most straightforward and maybe has the simplest way to get there. I think Defect is actually the second best, and then Silent and The Watcher basically just do it by going infinite. Uh, so today we're gonna look at an ironclad run. Here is the run history that we are taking a look at right before we get a peek at this deck in action. Before we get started, a couple of key cards and relics that I would like to point out that were super, super helpful for getting this achievement. First and foremost, obviously, is Barricade. This is going to make it very simple to get this achievement by allowing you to keep your extra block banked at the end of each turn. And this is key to building all the way up to 999 block. Impervious is a great card for gaining excess block once you already have Barricade in play. One of the problems with Barricade is that you often have a hard time getting enough block to keep excess block in the first place. If you're struggling to block while your enemies are attacking you, you're not gaining any extra block on the turns that they aren't attacking you. So Impervious is just a big jolt of block that is really nice for any deck that aims to block by a lot. Power Through is probably the first big block card that I got on this run. I got this quite early in Act 1. And that kind of planted the seed of looking for more cards that were more block related after that. So this was definitely what got the run going down that path. And it's just a very solid amount of block for only one energy. The wounds are not too bad because the Ironclad has a lot of ways to get rid of them with all of his exhaust. And we're going to take a look at one of those now. Second Wind came very quickly after the power through and they are a fantastic combination together. You can create wounds with the power through and then immediately exhaust them with Second Wind. Bonus points if you have Feel No Pain. But the real hero of this run is Entrench. When you are banking excess block each turn, you could eventually get there by adding little by little to your block every turn. But why do that when you can just double your block? I've talked before about how powerful the word double is and if uh, possible triple is in this game. Doubling or tripling anything is a massive, massive power boost. So when you are trying to gain a lot of block, Entrench is the best way to do it. If you start a block deck, you are basically just waiting to get Entrench, and then you win. As far as relics, Oddly Smooth Stone was very relevant for this run because we were so focused on blocking. Having one extra dexterity made every little bit count here and there, and it all adds up, so it provided quite a bit of block over the course of the entire run. Toxic Egg was great for giving us lots of free upgrades throughout the run. That meant we could go to more fires, though we ended up not really going to many fires because of the coffee dripper. But 
if we did need to go to fires, we could spend them resting. But what it really did was just give us lots of free upgrades. This is a very skill dependent deck. Because of our coffee dripper and the offerings that we were playing every combat, we did need a little bit of way to make sure we were healing and blood vial was a nice little source to go along with our starter relic to make sure that we weren't using offering until we killed ourselves. And turnip was actually really, really great here by making sure that we were always blocking for our full amount. We made sure that our main strategy for winning the run was never going to be nerfed. The main thing that can slow down a block deck is becoming frail and not being able to generate that excess block that you were looking for. And if you can't get enough block going in a block deck, you're not going to have a good day. So, without further ado, let's take a look at this deck in action. Here we are in Act 3, taking a look at the Darklings fight. I think this is the perfect fight to show this off because they don't really scale up. They kind of do, but they also lose their strength when you kill them, so they're pretty easy to keep weak. Which gives you the ability to stall the combat out and lets you kill them at your leisure. I already got the barricade up here on first turn. That's the key thing. Now I'm just playing other powers, getting other basics set up. I did have to be a little bit careful on this run with the Karen's Ashens and Juggernaut. I actually had a problem where I had just fought the Maw on the previous floor and I got all the way up to 970 block and then accidentally killed it because of Juggernaut damage. So here I'm just building up that bank of block now. They are not doing anywhere near enough damage to bother me and I'm not going to play that Juggernaut specifically because of what I just talked about. Now I easily have enough block. I can kill with Body Slam anytime I want and I can use their small HP pool to take care of them and get them down pretty quickly and easily when I feel like it. But until that, I am just trying to play as many block cards as I can and then saving Entrench to be played last. Here I'm continuing to play all of my block cards, getting that block as high as I can, as quickly as I can, and of course, slowly getting all the way up to 999. Again, skipping this juggernaut. One more entrench will do it so I can start to kill and get rid of them. Here, Battle Trance was really nice, especially in a small, tight deck like this. It helps you draw the Entrench more quickly, more often, and gets you up to 9900 999 block quite quickly and body slam for the kill. Let's close the video with a nice heart fight. On turn one we just do a little basic setup. We get the juggernaut going, but that's about it. I realize at this point there's really not a lot of point to me playing more block cards because I don't have barricade yet. So just ended there a little early. Second turn, the draw is also not great. I immediately start thinking about that Liquid Memories potion. And I was very unhappy with this discovery. I really, really wanted something better than any of this. And I was considering Rupture with the Bloodletting for a quick 
boost to my strength, but then I decided I may as well use this Gambler's Brew instead and use this Rupture to just draw one more card. And it's still pretty much just garbage. Did not really help at all. Still thinking again about that Liquid Memories, but at the best it would be a Ghostly Armor. 13 block and I felt like I could get more than 13 block out of this potion later so I decided to just eat this multi hit and that was that for turn two here we are on turn three and this draw is something I like much more lots of draw so I can get lots of cards in hand extra energy from the offering and all I'm really super interested in is getting to that barricade so I'm just gonna keep playing draw cards until I get there get all my other powers get a vulnerable stack going I want to get that in trench as soon as possible so I'm gonna head butt that back into the draw pile pull it with thinking ahead what I put back doesn't really matter because I'm going to battle trance anyway. Get loads of block. Now I see that impervious in a second in trance, so I'm going to rethink. Play card order for more block there. And I still desperately want that barricade this turn to save this block. I've got two energy. And I go for the Battle Trance, and I do not get it. I'm very disappointed right now, but it's not really that bad in the long run. I didn't exhaust anything important. Sometimes when you've got Corruption in a deck like this, if you kind of play your Corruption too early and you exhaust the key pieces, you run out of your ability to create block. But this deck does not have to worry about that. Now that I've got the barricade and a free turn where the heart is buffing, I can just do all of my block things. Now I've got 70 in my back pocket and I am very, very comfortable. I should be able to stay on top of the damage that the heart is doing. And as soon as I get a couple more quick entrenches, this fight will be over. For turn six, we get really, really nice draw. I'm still thinking about that Liquid Memories potion and how best to use it because I feel like I might be running out of a good opportunity to use it. But just building up a nice block bank and that discovery played along very nicely. Free Entrench. So I'm still thinking about that liquid memories and looks like power through is probably my best bet for just quick block here 15 doubled twice gives me 60 block for just one energy there and puts us in a great position for the rest of this fight now i can see what's in that entropic brew that i've been holding on to the entire run and it's not going to help us at all. <laughs> not that we need it. At this point, we can just play cards. I didn't really aim to do it, but now I'm realizing that I may be able to get 999 block here before the heart scales up too crazy. So, first play that first entrench I'm seeing now that I'm over 500 if I can stall just one more turn perhaps and get back to that entrench I may be able to get the barricaded achievement on the heart as well and I got very very lucky on that reshuffle the entrench showed up immediately and now I just need to kill the heart.
The heart is so low, but I don't have any more attacks to play. Figure I'll just get my block as high as I can. And then I realized the multi-attack with the thorns will kill the heart. GG. So that is it. Thank you guys for watching all the way to the end. It really means a lot to me. I may turn this into a small series where I try to get the achievement on each character. But I'm not sure yet if there is another achievement that you guys are curious about. Or perhaps some card, some relic that you want to take a look at and do a what the hell is up with that. Do let me know. Please drop a comment, like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff down below. And as always, have a great day and thanks for watching Ruckus Gaming.